Hey free MedStar, hope you've been having a fantastic week. Welcome back to my application journey. And I took a little break today from doing some accounting homework to talk to you about an equally fun topic, taking the MCAT. So before we get started, I know this is everyone's favorite topic in the pre-med world. And I thought that I would give you all a little bit of encouragement that my planner gave to me today. So the quote is, a little progress each day adds up to big results. Personally, I think that that rings super true for preparing for the MCAT. You can learn all the tips and tricks in the world from people who have taken it before you, but there's really no substitute for hard work. That being said, I've gotten a lot of questions about how I prepared for the MCAT. So I figured I would tell you guys a little bit about it. I took the MCAT back in January and thankfully I only had to take it once. I was happy with my score. So that was good. One and done is the goal, I think. My hope is that in sharing with you all how I prepared, you can get your goal score too and only have to take it once. Here's my top five tips for acing the MCAT. So first, be smart about picking your date. I think that that might be the most important factor in all of your preparation because once you pick your date, that determines how you prep. So take a look at your calendar alongside the dates that the AAMC offers the MCAT and see what works best for you. For me personally, we have a six week winter break at Ole Miss and I thought that that would be the perfect time to just sit down and crank out as much prep as I possibly could. Some people do it better over a long period and some people like to do it over the summer or during the school year when they're in classes. I wanted time when I could just sit down for about eight hours a day and just go through my preparation, but to each their own. So once you pick your date, now it's time to plan your prep, which brings me to tip number two, plan your prep well. Once you choose your date, you need to figure out how long in advance you're going to need to prep and how you're going to prep too. I mentioned I only had six weeks, so I knew I had a lot to cram in there. I figured that I needed to study about eight hours a day, but if your date is further in the future, maybe you like to take just two hour chunks. Take that all into account when you're planning your preparation and take into account how you're going to prepare too. There are tons and tons of resources out there to help you prepare for the MCAT. Full disclosure here, I'm a Kaplan student brand ambassador, so I might be a little bit biased. I used the Kaplan materials to prepare. I took the live online course, if you're wondering, and it was phenomenal. That, that and the AAMC resources were all that I used, and I felt super prepared. No matter what resources you decide to use, you need to sit down with your planner, maybe, and figure out what you're going to study when. If you do take a course, they'll oftentimes have a schedule preset out for you, which is very nice. I followed along with the resources that Kaplan gave me. If you do not have a schedule provided to you though, you can definitely make your own. Know that there are four sections to the MCAT, Chem Phys, CARS, Bio Biochem, and Psych Soch. So when you're planning your prep, you need to make sure that you hit on the content for all of those and also get prepared for the strategy of how to take the test. MCAT is not like many other tests you've taken, so it definitely takes some work to learn how to take the test well. On my content review days, after I was done reading through that chapter or that section, I would take a blank white sheet of printer paper and a colored pen and I would write out a little summary or some of the mnemonics that I had learned from that chapter um, just to jog my memory and kind of get down on paper what I needed to know about that topic. It turned out to be a really great tool once I was finished with all of my content review because I had all of these little summary sheets of my own. If I was forgetting something or if I had messed up on a topic on a question, I would go and grab those summary sheets find what I needed and just review from there. The best thing I ever did for strategy was I would practice looking at a question, just reading sort of what it was about and then thinking about everything I knew that related to that topic. So even if it was in the bio biochem section, I would think about everything that related to whatever they had said from chem phys, bio biochem itself, and anything in psych soch that related to. One of the interesting things about the MCAT is that it asks you to pull from this body of knowledge that you have and really make interesting connections. So by the time I finished my content review, I knew things in their own places, but I think what helped me to do really well and answer questions quickly on the actual test was being able to pull in all of that information at once and practicing to do that is really important. And you not only need to plan your content review, 
but also when you're going to take practice tests. Which brings me to tip number three, which is practice, practice, practice. The MCAT takes about seven and a half hours sitting time to take. So you need to build up your endurance too, which is why full length tests are so important. In total, I took about six of the Kaplan full length practice tests and I took both of the AAMC full lengths. Different people say different amounts of how many practice tests you should take. Do as many as you possibly can is my advice. If I had had time to do a few more, I definitely would have. And while taking the full length is very important to build up endurance, it's equally as important to go back and review what you did well and what you missed so that you can progress from there. Okay, so tip number four is set goals for yourself. I know that there's lots and lots of talk about setting goals and how important it is. Let me tell you, that is a huge, huge factor in why I did well on my MCAT. I sat down and looked at some of the schools that I thought I might want to attend and what their average MCAT score was. I set my personal goal just a little bit higher and not only did I write it down, but I also told my family members, told my friends, and wrote it on my mirror so that I would see it every single day when I woke up. I'm a very competitive person, so goals definitely work very well for me. In fact, about halfway through my prep, I ended up hitting my goal score and raised it by five points. When I took the real deal, I ended up exceeding my goal score again. So set goals, reach for the stars, and if you attain those goals prematurely, don't be afraid to bump it up. Don't get complacent. Here is my tip number five, take care of yourself. Studying for the MCAT is a taxing process. Think about studying 300 to 500 hours just for one test. That's a lot, and there's a lot riding on it too. So make sure that you take time for yourself and for your own mental health too. If you just push and push and push and push, then you might end up doing yourself more harm than good. It's better to take some time to visit with your friends, visit with your family, maybe go play with your dog. Do something that you enjoy so that you can get your mind off things a little bit. Taking care of yourself also means setting a schedule for yourself during your prep too. If you're prepping like I did all at once, then one thing that really helped me was having a set time. I got up each morning and I ate breakfast and I worked out and then I started my prep. Find whatever relaxes you so that you can focus your full mental energy on your prep when it's time for that, but not be eternally stressed out. Also make sure that you have a good support system in place. So tell your friends and your family that you're taking the MCAT so that they can be there and they can understand and support you. My family and friends have been there for me so much throughout this whole process and especially during the time I was studying for the MCAT. My little brother joked that it was almost like I didn't exist for five weeks even though I was at home when I was studying because I was in the basement for about eight hours a day so I hardly saw him but they were very supportive. Having your support system behind you can help tremendously so make sure that you tell them what's up and they will help you take care of yourself too. Also, don't be afraid to be flexible with your prep if you need to. If something unexpected comes up, it's not the end of the world. All right, so those are my top five tips for preparing for the MCAT. Here's a little bonus tip for you because it doesn't particularly relate to studying for the MCAT. Afterwards, you have to wait for about a month to get your scores. That month was probably the most stressful time for me ever. So my tip for after preparing for the MCAT is distract yourself as best you can. Go hiking, read a really great book. Just know that you have done your best and you will find out in a month. And PS, they do not release scores early, so don't hope for that. <laughs> well, there you have it. Now, all of you who are studying for MCAT, best of luck to you. And as always, make sure to subscribe to the Pre-Med Star YouTube channel and get on the Pre-Med Star site. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me a message on the site or leave it in the comments below. I'll see y'all next week.